Hey there, and welcome to another episode of How to Be Plane Spotter. I started this series about over half a year ago. However, I haven't had really many videos to add to this because I just didn't really have any ideas that might provide value. However, today's video is going to be a tutorial on how you can increase your chances to get your photographs accepted by one of the most famous aviation photograph sharing websites out there. It's the pinnacle of all these sites, and that is none other than jetphotos.com. Today's tutorial is going to be a little different than tutorials you might find elsewhere online because I'm going to take you along the entire process from start to finish as we head on out to take the photograph, go through the editing process, export, upload, and hopefully get the result of getting it accepted onto the website. So now let's head on outside to Buttonville Airport to take the photograph of a beautiful Chrono Aviation Pilatus PC-12 aircraft and then head on back inside to do the editing process and we'll go through all of that and much much more, so stay tuned. known airport that also has a considerable amount of aircraft is Buttonville Municipal Airport, located in the Buttonville region of Markham, Ontario, nestled between a major freeway and moderately populated areas of Markham. The airport offers quite a few optimal spotting locations, including views of the main runway threshold, allowing spotters the rare opportunity to get up close to some beautiful propeller aircraft making their landings or takeoffs. As soon as I got wind that the Chrono Aviation Pilatus PC-12 was making a quick visit to Buttonville, I grabbed some gear and here we are. Welcome to Buttonville Airport. Although it was a cloudy evening, contrasting shots weren't impossible to obtain, since I am standing extremely close to the departing aircraft. The biggest recommendation I can give to spotters getting photos for jet photos is to make sure to get the original photo as clean, crisp, and detailed as possible so that the editing process can be smooth and easy. So yeah, there you go. That was the photo taking process of the Pilatus PC-12 with Chrono Aviation in and out of Buttonville within about 10 minutes. That was really thrilling because you get right up close to the airport. And although it's a pretty cloudy day as you can see, hopefully we can show you through the tutorial where we're going to edit the photo to make it look nice and crisp. Now remember the most important thing is to make sure that the overall quality of the photo itself pre-edit is that's a Cessna taken off right there but what I was saying is you have to make sure the photo quality itself before editing is actually really clean and crisp already so uh, let's head on back inside and edit the photo so that it gets onto the website now see you back inside editing the picture is a lot simpler than one might think according to jet photos they want realistic clear pictures with few edits so that is what we're going to go with. First, go to the lens corrections and click these two boxes. I won't go into detail why you should, but just trust me. Whenever you edit your pictures, click these boxes. Next, let's use the rotate tool and line up the horizon so that it is straight. Using the lines to check whether the background is level or not. And if necessary, use a ruler and just measure the screen. Make sure that the background itself is level, not necessarily only the plane. Next, leave very little room between the leftmost and rightmost tips of the plane and the border so that there is not a lot of space. Keep the plane centered by making the tip of the roof and the lowest part of the belly equally spaced from the upper and lower borders of the picture respectively so that the plane is in the middle. Again, use a ruler to check if you cannot tell just by using the grid box. If you have any dust spots, use the spot removal tool and remove these spots. These spots are the only things you are allowed to remove. Please do not try deleting any other obstacles as your photo will be rejected. Now, instead of using the sliders first, let's take a look at the histogram of this image. From left to right, the graph shows the blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites of the picture. By dragging each section, you can manipulate the specific area to edit the image. Drag the black sections so that the clipping white triangle appears and do the same to the white section. This creates significant contrast. 
A properly exposed photo will have most of the information located across the histogram or slightly closer centered to the right hand side. A properly contrast edited photo also has a distribution of information across the entire lower x axis. Take notes of any extreme peaks on the histogram. This just means that a big portion of your picture's pixels are in that region, like the sky or a dark background. Usually just ignore these extreme peaks, as they do not represent the actual level of detail for the main subject and photo. Go to the sliders and move the highlights slightly left and increase the shadows right to balance out any extreme contrast you might have caused by moving the whites and blacks on the histogram. Take note that this might cause the black or white clippings to change, so move them back until the white triangle is there again. Please do not go overboard with your sliders so that there are any unnecessary halos or colors that will lead to rejection. Use the histogram to check for overall exposure and contrast, not the actual image itself since every monitor is different. You may adjust white balance slightly if you feel there are significant cool or warm colors. If the sliders are not enough, I use the tone curve to slightly adjust the highlights, lights, and dark areas by reducing highlights, increasing lights, and adjusting the dark zone as needed. However, you do not necessarily need to do this, especially if your picture was taken during a good sunny day. Now, select the vibrance to around 15 or 20, and the same with saturation. Do not go overboard with these as well, as the color will be too overpowering. We are almost finished! Go to the Details tab and press the Alt key while sliding the Masking slider. This allows you to select the zone where you are sharpening your photo. The white shows what areas you are actually going to be affecting with your edits. We do not need to sharpen the background as much. Simply adjust so that the white lines show the outline of the plane and the details like registration, logo, and windows. On a cloudy day like this, I need to sharpen the image a lot. Go until you can clearly see the letters and logos and sharpen the entire outline of the plane, adjusting details as you go. Remember, an out of focus image is unusable, while a soft photo can be salvaged by sharpening the plane to clear it. That wraps up our editing process. Easy, right? Rewatch what I was doing if you forgot what to edit, and now let's go to part 3. Now, exporting seems like an easy thing to do, but JetPhotos does not accept pictures wider than 1280 pixels. So some things to change in the export tab are, keep the resolution at 300 pixels per centimeter and select resize to fit the long edge at 1280 pixels. Remember to uncheck any watermark you might have and finally click on export. Uploading the photo is the simplest task of all. Just fill in the information and check any specific boxes that apply to you. In our case, the PC-12 is a small prop, and if this registration is the first one in the database or the plane is a special plane, fill in the hot photos box. For me, this picture is already in the database, so I have to leave it blank. The moment you've all been waiting for. Does this tutorial actually work? Well, I'm glad to confirm that it does work, because after days of waiting, the photo is finally accepted to the website. You can see it right here. I guess this means that you do not waste your time and the tutorial is a working one. If you wish, check out my Jet Photos profile linked below in the description box and share this tutorial to anyone having a tough time getting pictures accepted. Remember that not everything is going to work every single time, but by following through my rough guidelines, you should be alright. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope that I have helped you or at least provided some interest during this video. And as always aviators, I hope you all travel safe and have a great day everyone. Cheerio!